Our Bible word is from Luke 11 verses 13. If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? So this is from a section, a teaching of the Gospel of Luke about Jesus giving teaching about prayer. And of course this is part of the travel narrative. This is where Jesus is on his journey to Jerusalem and that we find in chapters towards the end of chapter 9 to chapters 19. And also here we find some important teaching of Jesus and some of this teaching we'll also find on the Sermon on the Mount in the Gospel of Matthew. That's uh, chapters 5 to 7. But here is Jesus and he is so he's traveling to Jerusalem, he's giving important teaching. And just a chapter before this, Jesus says something there and how Jesus relates to God as his Father. If we go to chapter 10, verses 21, it says that In that hour Jesus rejoiced in the Spirit and said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth. And then it carries on, All things have been delivered to me by my Father. And no one knows who the Son is except the Father, and who the Father is except the Son, and the one to whom the Son wills to reveal Him. So Jesus speaks here of His intimate relationship to God as His Father, and also that Jesus will reveal the Father to His disciples. And now our Bible word form part, forms part of a section where Jesus does exactly that. He reveals the Father who the Father is. So a larger unit we can see or say is it's the fatherhood of God which refers to chapter 11 verses 1 to 13. And in the ancient world fathers had supreme authority over the family. They were often harsh and so, so they had supreme authority over their wives, their children, their slaves. At the time of a child's birth, the father could accept the child or reject it, especially in the Roman world, in the pagan world of the time. He could say, no, I don't want this child. It's not my child. The child will only become his if he formally accepts the child as part of the family. A father could also sell the baby. The father could expose the baby. In other words, put it out on the street for it to die. That was actually a common practice in antiquity amongst uh, Greeks and Roman people. And the father could also beat his child at will. The father determined who the child will marry or not marry or get divorced, etc. So th this was the kind of idea associated with fatherhood in the ancient world, especially amongst Gentiles. Now, of course, Luke was probably writing here for a Gentile, Theophilus, the pro predominantly probably Gentiles that formed part of this Christian community for whom the gospel was written. So now Luke ex explains how Jesus revealed who this Father is. The Father who we believe in, our God, is a generous God. He's a loving God. He's a gracious God. He goes above and beyond and contradicts the normal kind of associations with being the Father. Or, or the father figure. Our God is gracious. So the narrow unit that we will look at is chapter 11 verses 5 to 13 and that is encouragement to pray. It all begins by 11 verses 1. That is where one of the disciples comes to Jesus and he asks him, Lord teach us to pray as John also taught his disciples. Now Jesus goes on and he gives Luke's version of the Lord's Prayer. And then from, from verses 5, that's where we will begin our investigation. And that, from verses 5 to 13, there are two main sections. It's from verses 5 to 10 and from 11 to 13. And there's similar structures involved here. There are two parables followed by its ramifications or an explanation. So there's a Jesus gives a parable in verses 5 to 8 and then explains what this means in 9 to 10. And then also 11 to 12, there's another parable 
then followed by another explanation. So let's go to verses 5. And he said to them, Which of you shall have a friend and go to him at midnight and say to him, Friend, lend me three loaves, for a friend of mine has come to me on his journey, and I have nothing to set before him. And he will answer from within and say, Do not trouble me. The door is now shut, and my children are with me in bed. I cannot rise and give to you. I, so Jesus is, is painting a scenario here. It's a small village. A, a friend comes to somebody, and now the friend has nothing to give to him to eat. And so he goes to somebody else in the village, knocks on the door, and this man responds in this way. Of course, it's, Jesus is painting a preposterous scenario here. So it's because hospitality was a big thing in the ancient world. If somebody comes to your village and to your home, you must offer hospitality. You must give food and drink because your honor as a host was at stake. Also, the honor of the village was at stake. If you don't, do not give hospitality, you will bring the whole village you bring it to shame, the name of that village, etc. So Jesus is painting here a preposterous scenario on purpose. So this question is, Jesus knows this is a, a crazy situation he's depicting. Where this man says, do not trouble me, the door is now shut and my children are with me in bed. I cannot rise and give to you. So that's the question that Jesus asks. Will a guy respond like that? So the obvious answer is no, because if he responds like that, he will bring his own household, even the whole village, into disrepute. And also because the rest of the village, they will hear this. They will know this man is acting in a dishonorable way by not getting up and helping the, this, this friend of his who's knocked at the door. Jesus carries on, he says, I say to you, Though he will not rise and give to him because he is his friend, yet because of his persistence, he will rise and give him as many as he needs. This is, so Jesus says this man will help. So this is the parable that Jesus gives. And now, what's the implications of this? Jesus says, So I say to you, ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds, and to him who knocks it will be opened. So Jesus is saying here, God will be like this honorable man that you will get up, even more honorable. I mean, God's the most honorable being in the world. And just like this man gets up to help his friend, God will help those who come to him. Remember, Jesus is here revealing the nature of the Father. The Father is loving. The Father is gracious. He will help His children. And now there's a second parable that Jesus gives. Now He concentrates on the household. Our Father acts to His children. If a son asks for bread from any father among you, will he give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, Will he give him a serpent instead of a fish? Or if he asked for an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? So Jesus is using an argument here from the minor to the major, or from the lesser to the greater. That was a typical form of argument used by the sages of the time, from the lesser to the greater. In other words, the lesser is parents will give good things to their children, to the greater. God, who is far superior to any human father or parent, will give even better gifts to his children. And this is the nature of God. Now, we can also compare this to the similar teaching that Jesus gives, or how Matthew has recorded this. And this is recorded in Matthew 7, verses 11. Let's, let's go there quickly. Because here we also find the teaching about prayer. 
But here we find it in the Sermon on the Mount. Matthew treats it a bit differently. He says there, if you then being evil know how to give good gifts to your children. So yeah, Matthew says good gifts to your children. How much more will your Father who is in heaven give good things to those who ask him? Now compare this, how uh, uh, Luke treats this teaching of Jesus. If we go back to Luke 11 verses 13. If you then being evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? And this is a distinctive feature of, the, of Luke. Luke puts great emphasis on the Holy Spirit. In the Gospel, also in Acts. Remember, Luke is also the author of Acts. And there the Holy Spirit guides the apostles in the task that they're doing. The Holy Spirit is poured out on Pentecost. Now, in the Gospel of Luke, the Holy Spirit is also prominent. When, when Jesus is baptized, it says there, And the Holy Spirit descended in bodily form like a dove upon him. And then a voice came from heaven which said, You are my beloved Son, in you I am well pleased. Jesus is empowered by the Holy Spirit. He is filled with the Holy Spirit. And for example, if we go to chapter 4 verses 1, it says, Then Jesus, being filled with the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Of course, there to be tempted by the devil. And also in verses 14, it says, Then Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit to Galilee. And also if we go to verse 18, this is where Jesus is in the synagogue. And he was reading there from Isaiah. And this is what he was reading. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, etc. So Jesus is anointed with the Spirit. He's filled with the Spirit. He's empowered by the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is a very important theological theme for Luke both in the Gospel of Luke and also in the book of Acts. And we can see this in our Bible verse also, that those who come to God asking, seeking, knocking, God will give good gifts to them. But God will even go beyond that. He will give the best gift, the Holy Spirit, to those who ask Him. Now, Jesus being the Son of God. Of course, he's, he's the Son of God par excellence. He's a quintessential child of God. But Jesus, yeah, he, he teaches his disciples, come to God as your Father, your loving Father, your gracious Father. Like Jesus teaches, our Father who art in heaven, like in the Lord's Prayer earlier in chapter 11. And also, yeah, Jesus says in our word, how much more will your heavenly Father, in other words, he's not just my Father, he's your Father. He will give you the Holy Spirit if you ask him. So come to God as your loving and gracious Father. He's not like a normal earthly Father, which can be quite harsh and extreme. Even who can kill you, who has life and death authority over your whole, over your whole life. God's not like that. God's a loving and gracious Father. Even more, Jesus anticipates it like he was anointed with the Holy Spirit when he was baptized. Jesus anticipates to his disciples, you, you will also receive the Holy Spirit. This is the good gift, the best gift that God will give you. You will receive the Holy Spirit. Now, of course, that is what happened as Luke records it on Pentecost in the book of Acts.